But first, the ABC is in turmoil, facing staff revolts and lawsuits. The highest profile case is former casual radio presenter Antoinette Latouf, who is suing the ABC for wrongful dismissal after the ABC says she ignored a directive from management to not share controversial content on social media. Now, the ABC says Latouf ignored that directive and posted a link to an article by activist group Human Rights Watch, which accused Israel of using starvation as a tool of war. The ABC is charter-bound to report objectively on the war, and their presenters are not supposed to take sides. Now, Latouf says she's been discriminated against, and so far, settlement negotiations have fallen through. The matter didn't resolve today, um, but the fight continues, and I'm willing and prepared to fight for as long as it takes. And I want to take a moment to thank the millions of people around the country, so much support around the country, but also overseas. And this is such an important case because it's not just about me, it's about free speech, it's about racism, it's about the important role journalists play in truth-telling, and crucially, it's also about a fair, independent, and robust ABC, and I love the ABC. I will always advocate and fight for an ABC that can operate and inform the masses, inform and entertain the masses without fear or favour. Even the journalist union is behind Latouf, and this rabble of staff have even threatened to walk off the job. Now, there is a sweet satisfaction seeing lefty journalists start talking about free speech when so many of them spend their days attempting to shout down and silence conservative views. But that aside, I have no real problem with what Latouf did, and it does seem like an overreaction to sack her for that particular post. The problem I have with the situation is why on earth did the ABC hire this person in the first place? Here she is in 2022 doing a TED talk mocking people for being white. So anyone who believes that words don't hurt or have an impact probably hasn't seen the effect two words can have on a room full of straight, white, cis men. And here she is describing what physical symptoms supposedly plague white people when others discuss diversity near them. They start to twitch, their throats get dry, some break out in hives. There have even been an increasing number of fits reported, usually of the hissy variety. <laughs> Now, that isn't clever or funny. It is just racialized hatred, and no culture or community deserves to be targeted as a collectivized group and demeaned for their shared immutable characteristics. This is supposed to be a principle we all agree on. These activists are importing these radicalized and perverted ideas of race and equality from the United States and attempting to make it the new norm. Just this week, John Hopkins Medical Faculty Dean had to issue a groveling apology after their Chief Diversity Officer, Sharita Golden, sent out an email targeting white people, males and straight people for their unearned privilege. It was a racialized message with derogatory connotations. And after the swift public backlash, the university had to release this statement. Regrettably, the January edition of this newsletter, which was distributed to all Johns Hopkins Medicine employees yesterday, included a definition of privilege that runs counter to the values of our institution and our mission and our commitment to serve everyone equally. Dr Golden heard the feedback from our community, sincerely apologised and retracted the definition. We fully support and appreciate her decision to do so. And as leaders of John Hopkins Medicine, we too repudiate this language. But for the ABC, a person who speaks publicly in this manner gets offered a radio gig. This was always going to end in tears. The ABC never stood a chance. Well, joining me this week on the panel is the Australian's Darren Davidson and the PR Council Managing Director, Christy McSweeney. Darren, let's start with you. Thanks for joining me on the desk. Okay. Uh, this situation at the ABC, where you have a radio presenter who is a casual employee who is now being sacked, and there's this messy court battle that's ensuing. What is going on? It's um, extraordinary, as you say, that she was appointed to this important role on ABC Radio in the first place. I mean, it, it doesn't take a lot of digging and desk research to find out that um, there's repeated examples of her questioning facts that have been corroborated. Uh, for example, 
um, the protesters on the steps of the Sydney Opera House chanting gas the Jews. Um, she's claimed that Israeli forces were uh, raping people and, um, and she's also um, rubbished the idea that Hamas had anything to do with killing Palestinians in, in Gaza. Uh, so she's got a, a clear track record here of, of being pretty loose with the facts. So it's extraordinary, extraordinary she was appointed in the first place. And I think one of the main points is, did she breach the ABC social media policy, um, which states that journalists must be um, independent, impartial, um, and, and not in any way um, harm the ABC's reputation. And it appears that she, she has, in fact. So. Um, on, on that basis, it seems that, you know, it was right to pull her up over this. Whether it was right to sack her or not, I'm not sure. I'll leave that to, to others to decide. But um, yeah, I agree, it's extraordinary she was in that position. Um, and um, let's see what happens. Yeah, Christy, it's, it's interesting because, you know, as Darren says, you don't have to look very far. There was that, that infamous story that, uh, that she co-authored with Crikey, which was denying that people on the step of the Opera House were, were saying anti-Semitic um, slogans against Jewish people, and there's video there. She tried to suggest it was doctored because somebody put subtitles on it. Um, completely absurd reporting. To give this person, I would argue, quite a privileged position as a radio host, with all of her talk about unearned privilege, etc. to give her that position, it's kind of these checks need to happen before someone's hired, don't they? Look, the ABC prides itself on being um, the voice of Australia uh, and it prides itself on have, or, or being the ground uh, that breeds the best reporters and, and around Australia to report on day-to-day -day issues that matter to Australians in so many different communities. I grew up a regional Australian. Um, I will always support the ABC and the fantastic work it does in breeding young journalists in the regions and uh, being the voice uh, of regional Australia but there's no doubt uh, there is a war going on uh, in the ABC's metropolitan newsrooms and certainly I echo the comments that it appears that she's breached um, the policy of her employer uh, which leads to disciplinary, disciplinary action in any uh, company that you work for, media or otherwise, uh, but whether it is right for the ABC to pursue this so doggedly uh, in a legal sense, I'm not sure. Is she the first person at the ABC or a media organisation uh, to put forward views that they personally wish to fight for? Is it offensive uh, to the Jewish people of Australia? Yes. Uh, does it deserve a court case? Again, we'll leave that up to others to decide. Yeah, it's such a great point because it's going to come down to, to legal technicalities and, and what the ABC is saying she was sacked over is sharing that post. And that post wasn't as offensive as those other examples. And that's what the case will, will come around. So we'll keep a very close eye on that. But look, while we're still talking about the ABC, there is actually another high-profile scandal involving the resignation of their federal political reporter, Noir Hadar. Now, she told the Sydney Morning Herald her decision to leave the ABC related to scrutiny, the coverage over they had received over the October 7 attacks. And is it any surprise that Haydar will instead take up a job with The Guardian, which must align with her values a bit better? The ABC is being tugged in two directions. There are progressive Jewish journalists who are infuriated with pro-Hamas activism, which has been bleeding into news reports. And that faction is at odds with the real radical left elements who signed an open letter saying that the October 7 attacks had historical context. Now, let's bring the panel back in to discuss, because Christy did touch on this a little bit earlier, that there is, you know, th these conflicts in there. But my reading of the situation are that there these multiple factions with competing interests, and then you've got the traditionally progressive Jewish faction who are infuriated with what they're seeing. And that is why people such as David Anderson, the managing director, is having such a, a tough time with this. Yeah, I don't envy David at all, but it's, it's a challenge that all newsrooms around the world are kind of facing at the moment, which is this creeping, well, it's not really creeping anymore, activism that's bled into newsrooms and, and news reporting. Um, and isn't labelled as such. Um, and it's really the job of newsrooms to report the facts, to um, corroborate the evidence and, and verify what they see and, and hear. And, and this is just another example, I think, of activism, uh, journalism being hijacked by activism and, and taxpayers certainly expect a lot, lot better of the ABC. Yeah, Christy, I mean, what, what are your views on, on the situation where you seem to have an institution which is a desirable place to work 
for the activists. So it's not so much a situation where, you know, when they get there, there's, there's not the editorial controls. It's that the entire cohort is made up of people that have extremely strong views on very controversial issues, on, on facts that are disputed, and that's where they all want to work. They all seem to be at the ABC. Well, even 20 years ago, Jack, showing my age here, when I was a young journalist, uh, I was desperate for a job at the ABC. Uh, mm. And I was told uh, by news directors at the ABC that my association with conservative politics uh, and indeed uh, my mother wow. being a politician of note uh, in Western Australia of the conservative side at that time would prohibit me uh, from being wow. taken seriously for a role with the ABC. So I happily uh, moved in commercial news where I remain... Uh, uh, to this day, as we see here. Um, so there's always been a prevailing resistance, I feel, towards those on the conservative side. Uh, I will say I do appear regularly on the ABC, but that is as a conservative. Um, so if you are seeking to be a journalist at the ABC, perhaps if you come out of regional Australia, you may be very surprised when you get to a metropolitan newsroom that uh, there are these factions, that ideology of of certain issues that are sacred to the left are very, very prevalent uh, and bleed into the job of journalism, which is ethical, objective reporting, upholding the code of ethics. Yeah, no, you're right. And, and the credit to all the, the regional journalists that do such a great job at the ABC, mm. let's hope this actually marks a bit of a turning point and maybe they are trying to get the house in order.